What's up, everybody? Welcome back to ATC. I'm your host, Bearded Aquarian, and I wanted to talk about uh, another cautionary tale, and I want to attempt to paint a picture just so um, everybody can can understand the context of the situation. And the, these particular cautionary tales are, are, are of past tense, but I think that there's something that we can all learn from them. And I want to, again, as I said, paint the picture, and I want to imagine or put yourself in this person's shoes. And so you are an athlete, you have cultivated yourself and your talent and your ability, you have ascended in the ranks of football and from an amateur status. This is all the way from Pop Warner to middle school to high school to college. You are now on the verge of being drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. And so this happened way, way back, all, all over 20 years, just about 20 years or 21 years ago to be exact. And imagine after your name being called, your parent or your mother demands that you pay her $1 million. Now imagine that for just a second. Yeah, I thought that too. And I want to talk about Philip Buchanan. And if you don't know who Philip Buchanan is, I'll explain it or describe it to you. Philip Buchanan is a standout football player. He's a native of Florida. He was a collegiate superstar at the University of Miami. He was on the last uh, Miami Hurricane National Championship team. And again, this goes way back about 20 plus years ago. That team had Clinton Portis on. It had the late great Sean Taylor, had Ed Reed. I believe they had Ken Dorsey, which is now, he's a quarterback's coach, office coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. That team was stacked. And Phillip worked his way all the way up, and he was actually selected in the first round, 17th overall by the Oakland Raiders. And I'm going to give you a fun fact as it relates to how the Raiders got that pick. Back in, I think, 2001, John after the Tuck game, John Gruden was traded to Tampa, and part of the draft pick package, which was two first rounders, two second rounders, and $8 million in cash, that draft selection was traded to the Raiders, and therefore the Raiders made their selection with Philip Buchanan. Philip Buchanan is cut, I would say, from the same cloth initially from Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders even gave him the moniker Showtime. Now, that's just kind of, I'm just trying to describe who Philip Buchanan is, so I'm painting the picture, so hopefully you are picking up what I'm putting down. Now, as we get on to the situation at hand, you have Philip, you have his mother. And so he gets, again, as I stated, he gets drafted and she demands $1 million. And Philip is probably thinking that she's joking, but he's actually, she's actually not. She's demanding a million dollars or she's going to take him to court. So I'm going to paraphrase a paragraph or kind of basically in his words, just so you can kind of get the context of what, how crazy this situation was. Soon after the draft, she told me I owe her a million dollars for raising me the past 18 years. Buchanan says he was he's being interviewed by Fox Sports. Well, that was news to me. If my mother taught me anything, it is the most desperate demand that a parent can make on a child. The covenant of having a child is simply that you give your child everything possible and they owe you nothing beyond a normal amount of love and respect. There is no financial arrangement and if you get old and infirm, your kids are around to help you to the point then you're lucky. There is, it is not written in the social contract. So his mother's not thinking about that. She's thinking about herself. She puts her son on the spot because again, he's loyal to his mother. And this story came about because I actually purchased Phil's book. It's called uh, New Money Standard. Most exciting time of your life. And your mama hit you with something that caused you to go. Say what? What happened? When she told me I was, it was so much going on and I didn't really know how to really take it. So I was like, man, I just bought you this house. This brand new house. I took you from living in the hood to living good. I took you from nada to Prada. But the crazy thing about it is it's some guys gonna get drafted tonight and tomorrow and their mama gonna ask them for $2 million. Your mama asked you for a million dollars. She said, I raised you. She asked you for, for a straight million dollars. For a million dollars, just like that. And you were just sitting there going, okay, is, is this real? Did, did you think it was like some cameras around that were pranking you or something? It was, at first I thought it was a joke. I didn't really think, I thought she was just kind of just saying things, and, but she kept saying it. So she said it over a two period of time, I mean, over a two year period of time. And so, and so the book is available where um, all all books are sold. Um, I bought it off of Amazon, but again, you can buy it off of Amazon or buy it pretty much, pretty much where any book is sold. Uh, and the book was published back in 2015. And so some of Philip's misadventures was based off of a statement that he made. I, I thought it was a profound, it had a profound effect on me and just made me more intrigued as I began to read the book. And so he talks about when he first got in the league, he talked about he was all dollars and no cents. And what, what he meant by that, he had no financial acumen, no, he wasn't a savant as it relates to finances. 
And so within his book, he begins to talk about not only his mother suing him, but his own grandmother. Whenever he came around, his grandmother was like, give me, give me, give me. She essentially would always ask and pester and demand money from him. And again, because he is this loyal guy, he's a loyal grandson, he's loyal to his family, he loves his family. He go ahead, he ponies up the cash, he gives her the cash. You had distant relatives, you had distant, you know, distant cousins and 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 just all types of people, friends saying we made it, keyword we. And they're just hitting him up and he doesn't know how to say no. And so he's buying cars, he's buying a, a putting money down for business propositions. And this is basically cash grabs by people. They they had no formal business plan written up. They just basically were greedy because they knew, oh, here comes Philip. Here comes the guy that's going to give me 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand, or I need a new car or I need this and need that. And, and essentially, Philip could could see himself basically going broke. But again, he just didn't pay close enough attention to what was happening. And so back back to his mom. So he does not wisely. He does not give his mom the million dollars. And so he says he moved out at 17. So he actually, he was, I guess, being facetious. He only owed her 900 and I believe nine and a half, a, 900, a little over 950,000 versus the 1 million bucks. So he still decides to buy her a very nice house and he bought a house in his taste. So he essentially, instead of buying a modest house that was still new, that was still modern and convenient and the upkeep was probably minimal or moderate, he bought this lavish house for his mom. The childhood home that they resided in, he paid that off as well. And he told his mother, mom, sell the house. She doesn't sell the house. She lets her sister, which is his aunt, move in the house. So now she has a house that's fully furnished, paid for exclusively by her son. She doesn't have to lift a finger. And now she's also receiving a rental income from her, from her sister, which is Philip's aunt. Again, this is going against his wishes because he clearly stated, mom, I need you to do X, Y, Z. This makes sense. And so as you go and you read further and further into the book, eventually it gets to a point where Philip is like, wait a minute, I'm losing all this money because I'm the person making these payments. She also has a boyfriend who Philip didn't like this guy, right? Cause this guy just, he's taking, he's taking advantage of her. He's take, take, take. And so he kicks the guy out. Eventually he tells his mom that, Hey, you, you're, you're gonna need to move out of this house because this house is eating a hole and burning a hole into my pocket. And so she reluctantly decides to move out of the house and guess what? She loses the house. So now because the house is in his name, again, your credit is affected. Everything is affected in a negative sense. And so the, the astronomical amount of greed that he endures, that he goes through until he has that, I call it eureka moment or that light bulb moment to where he understands that, hey, I got to save something for myself because if I don't, I'm going to end up in a cautionary tale, but the cautionary tale is not going to have, have, have a happy ending. And so it takes Philip to a point where, in, in part, again, I'm not going to tell the entire book because you need to go buy the book. And the book's a short read. It's under 200 pages, super easy to read, but very insightful. And I think everybody can learn a lot from it. He's even, he even goes to a point where he's actually set up by some of his childhood friends, he's robbed at gunpoint, pistol whip, hit, everything's taken in the house of value, including he had a, uh, cause he's from, you know, from Florida, he has this nice, I think 72, 73 uh, Impala, which are called dunks, fully furnished. Again, he's he's affluent, he's rich, he's tapping, he has liquidity. He's even robbed of that. And that's how bad it got. And it got to a certain point where he started to realize that he needed to not, or he needed to stop, he had to turn the faucet off. And when he t decided to turn the faucet off, what I mean by is giving money out, people started to distance themselves. They started not talking to him. They started turning their backs on him. And I, I want to commend Philip for at least taking and having the common sense and the assemblance to, to understand that, hey, I, I have an issue because number one, I'm overspending money on myself, but now I'm taking care of everybody and they're not doing anything for me. They're not helping the situation now. If, I, if I'm unable to continue to pay for these houses, these cars, these whatever he's giving the money to them for, who's going to step in? And the answer was nobody. So he finally, it, it, he finally had that moment where he had to stop. And so he stops. And then he finally is able to serve, survey where he's at. And he realized that he's almost broke. 
And so Philip has played or played in the NFL, I think for about, I think a little over a decade, I think 10 or 11 years. He played obviously for the Raiders. The Raiders are my favorite team. That's another fun fact. He's played for the Redskins, played for the Buccaneers, played for the Texans. And I believe he also played for the Lions. So he's, he's vested in the league because he played over five years. But luckily he was able to stop. He was able to properly assess his financial situation. And now he's a, a, a accomplished children's author. He does a lot of philanthropy work. And he also still is going around and he goes to these rookie symposiums in the NFL. And he, he tells his story because it needs to be told so these rookies can watch out for even your own family. And now I want to move on to one more cautionary tale. And I want to talk about a current NFL player because Phillips retired now. He's been retired, I think, since like 2011. But Tyron Smith, who's the current offensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys, he had a, a similar story to where he had to have an actual restraining order filed against his mother and his stepfather because they were, in quote unquote, in his words, in the pursuit of collecting financial gain. And so Smith family had been harassing him over and over. Um, you know, at the time uh, he was 21 years old, he had just signed a contract worth twelve and a half million dollars. And his family just kept begging and demanding and asking for money. And it got so bad that he had to go to the police to in, to put a restraining order to keep people from calling him, from contacting him, from coming into close vicinity. The mother obviously had a different agenda or she Again, this is contested or disputed that because uh, Tyron was dating another woman and that they think the woman was taken over, had his mind all messed up. I, I don't think that was the case, but there was an incident, a, a potential incident at the house as it relates to um, some of his his siblings wanting entrance into the house. The girlfriend didn't want her and want them in the house and whatnot. But his, his story is, again, another cautionary tale of essentially when you don't know how to say no initially it gets out of control and your own parent or parents can be your undoing and so let this be a lesson to any and each and every one of us that if you come into generational wealth or if you're doing well for yourself because you have multiple streams of income it makes sense for you to be selfish and to think about you there's nothing wrong with giving back there's nothing wrong with showing love there's nothing wrong with helping someone out from time to time but at some point you have to say no because if you don't you will end up just like some of these NFL players that's down and out, poor and destitute. So um, as, it, as it remains to be seen, uh, Phillip again, he was able to save his NFL uh, fortune. Luckily, because he, again, he had to take a look. He knew what was going on and he reached out. He got the needed help that he needed. And I'm certain that Tyron Smith as well has been very, very astute and very smart with his money. And unfortunately, he had to seek legal recourse against his his parent right his mother and his stepfather because they were harassing him for money so in the end greed will always supersede what your relationship is with your family or your friends and i just want to know what what would you guys do or what do you think about these stories and so um, that's it for this video so leave a like share and subscribe hit the notification bell and just let me know how i'm doing let me know if i need to tweak or change something this is beard aquarium this is all things considered and i'll see y'all on the next video